Well, hello, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming to, to our talk. So I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on with Hill Packard Enterprise uh, and what we're doing with, is it too loud? Seems too loud. Uh, with, op with OpenStack and our products uh, there. Let's see if I can make things move. Boy, if you think about how the summit's gone so far, it has really been a illustration of how OpenStack has gone mainstream. When you look at all the different use cases that we've seen, uh, and we've got what I call the 100,000 core club, which kind of clearly got articulated in a lot of talks over the last couple of days, those people running it at that kind of scale. What you, hmm, kind of going back, um, folks. Sorry, having a little bit of an AV challenge. Backwards and forwards. Okay, we'll try again. So what I was saying was we're seeing OpenStack get embedded in more and more ecosystems because over the last year, year and a half, we've done collectively as a community a tremendous amount to make it more successful in different workloads. Um, raising from high performance computing to telcos, uh, we have whole work streams on NFV to different, um, hmm. Guys, we're bouncing around a lot on the slides here. Okay, cool. Real-time adaptation, cool. Sorry about that, folks. So when we think about the, the products that, uh, that HP Enterprise offers, we offer Helia and OpenStack uh, across all kinds of vertical, vertical customers. As we try to serve the largest uh, 1,000 global enterprises uh, and then move that out, what we have is customers that are trying to build sophisticated private clouds to accelerate the innovation that their lines of business are creating so that they can get, basically get out IT out of the room. And what I mean by IT is the line of business is creating software products, services, and what they want, in essence, is no meetings. What they want is the, the ability with hundreds of APIs to get their work done without asking anybody for permission, without asking anybody, can I do this, can I get this, when can I, I need a meeting to get some servers. What we're trying to do is provide a sophisticated data center automation which covers all of those services that we have. And what we're doing is we're applying them to a wide variety of uh, different customers and customer types. When you kind of look at the customers that we're often working with, they kind of fall into this pattern that, that seems to work pretty, pretty well for us. The pattern is we, people have somewhere on the order between five and 15,000 applications, which is truly a colossal estate of code that they're, they have in these systems. And they're independent and they need to figure out what to do with them. And they're trying to evolve their, com their computing infrastructure to be able to both manage costs, but also some small fraction of these, hundreds, maybe a thousand, are rapidly evolving or need to rapidly evolve. And they currently can't because they're, tr they're trapped in a virtualization infrastructure that doesn't provide them the kind of abilities that keep their developers uh, agile. So as we try to sort this out, what you end up seeing is some number, 10%, 15%, you know, they don't change. Just basically help host that, let it run. The middle part of our applications, they are under some evolution and they would like to have a more agile infrastructure so they can do the kind of periodic releases they have to that code. And that's where they want to be able to take, make use of private cloud technology. A subset, 5, 15, five 10, 15%, uh, they want to, it makes sense to move to the public cloud for whatever reasons they've got there. And then there's a whole set that basically they built them you know, 5, 10, 15 years ago, and these are really replaceable by SaaS applications today. So back then there weren't expense systems and there weren't kind of a, a billing management systems. The kinds of things you have today that are very common SaaS applications. As we talk to customers, it's like, look, this whole part of your estate over here, you move that to SaaS. So you can focus on the areas where you're actually creating strong value. And to do that stuff in the middle of a private cloud, what you have is, the desire to have a wide set of APIs instantly accessible that allow people to build both kind of virtualized and cloud native applications. Now you're doing this for a large company. 
you need other things. You need protection. This application can't see that application. You need multi-tenancy. You need to be able to then bill back because your project has got a, a budget of X tens of thousands of dollars of IT and your budget has some different budgets. We need to be able to provide chargeback, uh, provide security and compliance. Um, a lot of the work that uh, the community's done uh, and, and we've done specifically is on making the OpenStack more uh, compliance friendly. And I'll talk a little bit more about what we're gonna go in that, in that vein. But customers have been very clear with us about what they need to see to be able to put this into, uh, into a kind of a full production. So as we kind of think about the last year, uh, how did we get to where we are and what, what's kind of made things more and more successful? So a few things that have evolved when I think about kind of OpenStack over the last uh, year or so. HA for the control planes, uh, being able to do live migration of both the control plane and the data plane, uh, absolutely critical for folks. Uh, when you see, when people talk about in the old days, go scroll back two years, I'm um, gonna do a version of OpenStack and they now go repave the whole infrastructure. It's just not acceptable for anything except for the most extreme cases where, that's a, where you can do that. Now you don't have to do that. You can actually do live migrations and you can do live control plane updates. Getting, the, I mentioned security earlier. People want to have more and more of their e-commerce, more and more of their com, uh, business critical financial information, certifications, being able to certify PCI, uh, HIPAA, and other kinds of compliances need to be possible within kind of a product or an OpenStack kind of framework. And part of that is logging, metering, monitoring. You've got to be able to make things visible to the, the systems that then check that. Workload diversity. When you think about the various different kinds of structures that people put in place, everything from a classic VM, or a VM workload where the VMs last for, for many, many months or, or even years, to people who are building more elastic VM type applications, to those that are putting a, a Kubernetes on top of something where the, the workload itself is very dynamic, but the, the VMs underneath are actually kind of hidden from the developers. So I think that over the last year, we made a, collectively we made a lot of progress in these different areas, and we're starting to really start to see the fruits of getting into the large, uh, large enterprise and the large specialized uh, domains of that. So despite the fact we made a fair bit of progress, there's still a, way, there's still a ways we wanna, we wanna take things. There's a ways to go here. I, I gave a keynote back in Vancouver and I talked about how hard it was to run OpenStack and I think we've made tremendous progress uh, in the last 18 months um, in making it more operationally effective, making it more uh, easier to have people skilled up and, and being an OpenStack operator we still have way, ways to go there. I think that's a continual journey. Until you're running you know, 10,000 physical machines with a handful or less of people, I don't think you're there. So how do you keep approximating that and finding out where, where the bottlenecks are, where the time goes for any kind of operations and bringing that further and further down? Uh, pushing to more scale, I mean, like I said earlier, I think we're seeing more and more people in the, 10, 000, the 100,000 core club uh, it's really exciting to see people pushing you know, between five and, and 20,000 physical machines across multiple availability zones in multiple data centers. We're kind of at the verge of multi-tenant ironic. So uh, when we talk to customers, there's a very strong desire for bare metal as a service. And one of the challenges I think we have as a community is that sometimes we associate a strong use case with a project but they're not always the same. What you have is people want bare metal as a service, they want it multi-tenant, they want a strong network isolation. There's a variety of things that people want which encompasses four or five projects to be able to make that thing happen for a customer case. And I think we're, we're getting there and we've got multiple projects that have made a lot of progress here uh, in the last, last year. And then there's kind of the business fundamentals of being able to do backups of your control plane and being able to have uh, VM high availability. Uh, those are th some of those are projects that have come out from other open source projects, and some of those are things that we're, we're kind of doing generally in the community. And the collection of SDNs that we have. Um, 
what we see is, is, a, is a real maturation in the SDN landscape. Um, see more and more companies are adopting this. It's getting out of the kind of the leading edge and getting into the more of the mainstream. And people have made choices there, and those choices then need to get reflected into having Open OpenStack adapt and evolve within and live within that existing uh, network design. So what I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is our latest, our latest product. So today we're releasing a Helion OpenStack 4 uh, at the summit. The last summit we released three, the summit before that released two. Uh, so it's an enterprise grade uh, product. It has all of our latest uh, technology we've baked into this. Uh, it's based on a uh, version of Mataka. And we're very happy to have a lot of significant uh, improvements in, in features and capabilities in this. And I'll talk, talk with you a little bit about what some of those are. So I, mean, I think the first thing is our, our third party ecosystem and our ability to have third party adaptations or plugins go through the migration and, and, and uh, update process. So a framework that allows us to take uh, the, the customizations that people have done to their existing uh, OpenStack installation, whether it's a two or three, and be able to take that forward into four so that there's a, it's a much lighter weight uh, update process than we had previously. A lot of increased performance. Everything from stuff at the Linux level to uh, network uh, authorization to things like DPDK and SRIOV uh, improvements. So we're now much more uh, ready for high network, high bandwidth VM applications, which you'll see uh, is important in a, lot of, in a lot of different workloads, specifically good in some of the telco workloads, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. And then the other big theme we've had is operability. Uh, it's, it's been a, an area that we've been trying to focus on. We've been trying to understand how we can improve our monitoring, our auto remediation, our HA capabilities, so that basically all the items that make it challenging to run an OpenStack instance, we've been working very diligently to reduce that complexity, reduce the, the path, and improve something we call Ops Console, which is our operator, operator dashboard, which allows you to take many actions. It allows you to look at capacity, understand where your bottlenecks are, and basically have a full view into your, your live application uh, and, your, and the way the cloud is running. Um, part of the network that we put, network integrations, um, Nuage, DCN, uh, Mitakura, uh, NSX, a lot of these integrations are now built into the box, so it's very easy to, to adapt to an existing complex data center, uh, something that we were not able to do previously, but we're very good at right now. Uh, and even some v, uh, VM auto scaling. So using heat to, to look at the load and figure out how to auto scale um, VM type applications is another part that we put in place. So as we kind of looked at the overall TCO for the, for the application, we've really tried to understand for, run, for somebody running a thousand node cluster, what does it take? How do you make it simpler to have people onboarded and have simpler to take the repeated processes that have to happen, shrink those down and make those more and more automatic. And our framework has made a lot of progress there. We expect to have even more progress in, uh, in five once people are starting to use this. But trying to streamline all the operations uh, activities and kind of take those manuals of courses that people have to do and say, well, if, it's, if this, then do that. Well, computers are really good at that. So how do we do this, then do that, and tell you what happened, versus ask you to run a nine-step a nine script? Um, when we think about doing this also for carrier-grade type applications, when you uh, are in discussions, when you're with carrier-grade uh, telcos, they want to have many different pods of deployments, uh, dozens or, 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 or even, even up to 100 or so different regions, and they need to be managed remotely, they need to be able to be uh, updated and be able to do that in a kind of a remote installation uh, a mechanism. So as, as I talked about, we really are trying to focus a lot of core features on the communication service provider area. We think that we provide, it, all the core product is all upstreamed. Uh, we've got a lot of capabilities that allow people to run high complex VM at type applications. Um, 
and provide that kind of availability that people are looking for. And it really simplifies that kind of NFE type deployments in different scenarios. So at HP, we're absolutely committed to, uh, to open source uh, and providing all, all of our stuff up uh, as, as open source, open source pr products, uh, whether it's our lifecycle management, uh, our operations consoles, or our, our, uh, the core bits of our system. When we think about kind of how we're moving forward and trying to make this better and better for um, uh, people who are providing this for, for telcos, there's a tremendous amount of life cycle automation that needs to happen as you change, modify your network, uh, as you try to orchestrate the VNFs, the virtual network functions, and try to provide that kind of management system in place. So we also have part of the Open NFV uh, partnership program, which is continuing to grow that ecosystem uh, of products and services. So really, really excited to have, have a, uh, Haas 4 out there, you'll see, if you go down to the floor, you can see uh, some information, more information on it, uh, and would love to be able to talk to you about what we're able to do for a variety of different kind of customers uh, around Haas. So with that, I'd like to also tell you about another product that we're launching today. Um, we're launching uh, Helion Staccato. So Staccato is a cloud native application framework that works, um, you may have heard of it before, it, it used to run on top of, only on top of Haas. It now runs on top of many of the leading infrastructures. It runs on top of OpenStack, AWS, vSphere, uh, and Azure, and this is, this is also shipping today. So what we've done is we've re-architected this for those customers that are looking for a multi-cloud, multi-IaaS type application, which allows people to write cloud native applications running on multiple infrastructures simultaneously. So you can spin up clusters in any of these four environments. You can manage those clusters from a unified uh, command line interface and a unified control panel and have your application developers have access to resources both on your data center if you want, of course on, uh, on AWS uh, and Azure uh, also. So let me tell you a little bit about what it, what is included in Staccato 4. The bottom level uses open source technologies of, uh, of Terraform and Kubernetes to provide a control plane that auto updates, auto remediates, and very flexible connections down into the lower infrastructure. On top of that, we provide both a Cloud Foundry uh, opinionated uh, distro, which is cl it's Cloud Foundry certified, we also have what we call Cloud Engine, Code Engine, I'm sorry, which basically provides a, a, a CICD environment for those de application developers that don't want to roll their own. So it's integrations with Garrett and Jenkins and, a lot of the, and Git and a lot of the common application tools. So for people that want to take this or optimize it a little bit, uh, this is a great way to get a CICD environment up and going in a very quick way uh, for those people that are just working on their application itself and to build 12-factor applications. And then off to the side for the operators, we have things that are a console that ha handles the multiple control planes. We've got tools and a CLI, makes it very production ready so that we can have the operator be able to work and manage these clusters in production. Again, just like you'd expect for cloud native, look, this application itself uh, is easily upgraded with no, with no application downtime because we're using kind of underlying container technologies. So you may be asking like, what is in there kind of beyond what you've got for, for Cloud Foundry? Uh, we can import Docker images into this. You can really make very good use of um, a higher level set of abstractions for your application, your application developers and your, your, your IT developers. Uh, we really think this provide, it really accelerates the ability to use uh, cloud native application frameworks uh, for both Docker, Cloud Foundry. Uh, it's got integration with .NET and a lot of the, the classic uh, dynamic languages. So we think this is really an out of the box application experience where you can be productive right off the bat. The obligatory feature list in very small font. Uh, the, the, the team really took this whole product to the next level, so it's, it's a completely re-architected 
cloud native certified application. And it, we've really tried to get in the full set of capabilities that we think kind of an application developer and an operator would have to, to be able to trust this. So um, everything from uh, LDAP, single sign-on, security, giving you information about logging and, uh, and what the what, how many resources an application is using, to being able to build and bind this, these applications to data stores. Uh, one of the things we offer is a, is, a, is a wide variety of data stores built on this, things that, that your application developer is very familiar with, whether it's MySQL, Postgres, uh, Redis, uh, RabbitMQ, Mongo. So when you think about what an application developer wants to be able to get access to, that these are the kinds of things that they expect and they want to be able to get access to as data stores. It's very easy to build an adapter to other data stores that we don't have, for ones that are outside of our system. Um, Informix, I think, is one that showed up. So somebody really needed to be able to connect into a, an existing data store they had that was 15 years old, and it was not that hard to take the framework and ad ad build an adapter to that, and then everybody could go use that adapter and then connect into that, that legacy data store. So very excited about the kind of a wealth of, of features and capabilities that, that customers, uh, that developers are gonna be able to use kind of right out of the box. And so you'll be able to see that downstairs at, at our booth also. So really, maybe just to, to summarize, the, our portfolio is really based on open technologies. Um, I've just talked to you about the latest releases of Staccato and Helion OpenStack, kind of our core green uh, products there, the, the, the platforms that we use. On top of that, we have some solutions. We have a cloud system which is a integrated hardware and software, which includes both Staccato and Haas. So for our customers that want basically to go buy a couple of hundred nodes of uh, a, basically a private cloud in a box and land it there, uh, turn it on and it runs, it's all pre-integrated, everything is all kind of set up. That's what we call a cloud system. Um, and our carrier grade, I've talked a little bit about carrier grade. The carrier grade product is a, an enhancement and an elaboration with more features on top of the underlying platform. So we've kind of a whole family of things ranging from really straightforward out of the box private clouds through sophisticated systems that provide uh, carrier grade and then trying to focus the world in the middle of the enterprise developer who want private clouds with cloud native application technology to be able to go do that. So really at a high level, this is what we're, we're announcing today and we're excited to be able to talk with you guys down, downstairs uh, in, our, in our booth and, and walk you through things and answer any questions you might have. I know we've got a few minutes here. I'm happy to take, take some questions. We've got microphones. I think there's one over here is what I see. Anybody have the first question? If not, we can all, I'm so also happy to take conversations on Twitter. I'm at Interante. So you can just uh, tweet at me and have a conversation. Happy to, to meet up if you want to get a cup of coffee or, uh, or likewise. No questions? Okay. So I'll be up here for a few minutes um, if anybody wants to catch up or talk. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time.